Um, up next is high diving. So this is like this kind of diving, only it's like from a cliff or from, these are usually one meter, so about three feet, ten, is it one meter to ten meters, ten meters a little over thirty feet, approximately, it's, it's, it's more, but my point, approximately, go like a third of a football field, right, it's, no, that's a hundred yards, that's really, okay, that's horrible, approximately, so it's like approximately, but not exactly, so approximately three to thirty feet, this sport goes to like 20 to 27 meters is kind of the standard right now. So we're talking a whole lot more. Like that's double to triple that approximately 30 feet. It, it's, they're very high off the water. The danger aspect of not only executing the dive and entering the water, but the divers go down much further in the water. It tends to be conducted outdoors um, and like lakes or like Bo huge bodies of water because the divers go much deeper in the water and they will actually have I've watched these competitions they have I've not done it myself and I've been with people who've chosen to do it and asked if I want to do it and I said no um there will be people lifeguards in the water and as soon as the person hits the water the lifeguards swim to where the person entered the water and make sure the diver comes back up it's that high of risk because they don't even have lifeguards on the pool deck they're in the water both of these sports lifeguards are on the pool deck. So when lifeguards have to be in the water to make sure the person's alive and like comes back up, that that's, that, that tends towards higher difficulty. Um, these also have lifeguards on the pool deck, um, but there's also tends to be other people around um, kind of thing. It, 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 it's just one component of the sport. It, it's still the basic, just jump off something, enter feet first, do some flips, maybe, don't have to, um, enter hands or feet first. So it's not like the skills that are required that make it more difficult than pool swimming are kind of more I would call it more a lot more self-restrained so like in watching divers at like the Olympic Games and stuff they tend to do a lot of flips really fast they just lean into the downward motion maximize that score really high get a gold medal it's it, every single gold medal it looks like that um high diving does not work like that the higher difficulty dives tend to be a lot more restricted in one's movement because just leaning into the dive is not really doing anything as an athlete right it's it's just math it, well it is that's that was um not quite right it's a they, they lean into it so in that sense they just have to control the motion versus in high diving because there's a whole lot more distance for things to go wrong the dives are far more like restrained is the word uh, the word i'm going for um the sport requires self-discipline and not just leaning into something and just going with the motion you know it requires kind of s figuring out to slow control their own bodies with that motion and so in terms of like which one do i like to watch more well this one because the best people have self-control versus in this one, at least at the Olympic Games, diving at the Olympic Games tends to be kind of more like, wow, those people really aren't in control of the move, their movements. Um, they just really lean into it and do a bunch of flips really fast. And that's nice, but this is far more elegant. The, I would say so like, the, there's a baseline of elegance that does not necessarily exist for the sport. Not, not really for the sport, definitely not for that sport, but like, this is like the sport that tramples elegance, but that's the bottom line, is you got to trample elegance. Um, so how to put it. And then, and it is not the same as riding a horse on land. It's, it's, I, as someone who has played both water polo and rugby, my, my, it's like rugby in the water, only one cannot touch ground kind of thing. Like, like rugby is a game that doesn't stop, it's, 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 or unless there's like a foul. It's, it's like rugby in that sense, only in the water. High contact, very brutal requires a whole lot of physical prowess kind of thing. Up next is surfing. Uh, I have surfed. It's not really my sport. Um, it requires basic swimming abilities, uh, some sort of 
the bottom line entry in, need to be able to do the sport competitively requires some ability to be in control of one's fears or not fears but one's body when falling um in a way that diving and high dive high diving and diving don't really um like it's interacting with w nature uh versus this is just entering like you'd say, if they're diving outdoors, they're just entering nature, right? They're entering a body of water. This is interacting with a wave that is either man-made or um, natural. So a lot of surfing competitions, uh, as someone who lived in Hawaii for three years, there's a lot of pushback to surfing as it exists now and is continuing to develop because what happens is a lot of surfing competitions actually don't have natural waves anymore um, and it's transitioning more towards that is they'll take a barge out and generate waves for the competitors to surf on um so it's 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 interacting with perhaps the better term is natural substance water uh, however the waves are not always natural waves they're sometimes man-made by <laughs> a barge or something just they have certain devices that generate the waves for competitions um there's a lot of people who like to surf on like cruises and stuff and they'll have like a wave pool or something like that. so and sometimes those are actually made into competitions that kind of thing so it's not always natural so saying that surfing is a sport centered around nature is no longer accurate um as yeah just the reality of it uh but it does require skill and it does require some of this basic swimming um control of oneself when falling so if they fall off the board they or need to be prepared to fall off the board they need to be in control of falling um and then balance there's a huge balance and in interaction with they have to be able to control the board or maneuver the board if they're not controlling the board um that kind of thing um but still not at the level of interacting with other people on the same team in, in a team that's doing the same thing so there's that one, two left. Up next is lifeguarding. It's also termed life-saving. So I've been a lifeguard. We had life-saving competitions uh, through the YMCA. So I worked at the YMCA and there were, we could, it would come up annual, at least annually. Um, it might've been like every six months. And we could send a team to compete in the life-saving competitions. I chose not to do that. Um, some people did. It was very intense. It's very serious. Like, for like, I've had to rescue someone. What does it mean to rescue someone? It means someone is drowning. And if I don't save that person, by the time I get to that person, that person is dead. And so, like, there's a... You actually have to be able to do this because if you can't do this, the person dies. Right? It's it's the... It's, it's a, the closest one... Uh, the closest I've ever got to watching someone die, right, is rescuing somebody because if I hadn't made that rescue, they might have died. <laughs> um, so it's a it's a, a unique thing. So one needs to be able to stay in control of watching people who are potentially about to die and saving them in a rational and reasonable state and executing um, textbook life-saving procedures <laughs> um you need to be able to swim you need to be able to run there's a running component to this usually there's um even if it's just like it's about find getting to the victim quickest which is not um you need to take into account the most important variable is depth of water right like it might be the person's right there but if the person's right there i might run all around the pool depending on the depth of the water um so it's not like some physical principle where it's just run here and then swim to the person. No, no, depth of water matters a lot. There's a big difference between 12 feet deep and two feet deep that I can run through, right? <laughs> water. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It, it's very cognitive, kind of like water polo and artistic swimming. Um, artistic swimming also requires synchronization with music. Um, it's uh, the most creative of any of these sports on here and about to be on here. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it requires, it, of all of the sports that end up being on here, it's, I would say it's the, requires the most emotional control. Um, and it actually is, uh, based on making sure people 
don't die, which a lot of people struggle with and a bunch of pool swimmers don't ever go the path of lifeguarding for that reason they don't want. Like there were lifeguards in, I think it was my state, who it, they took too long to respond to somebody who was drowning and they went to prison. They were convicted of murder because of it. Okay, like a lot of pool swimmers are just kind of like, no. I was a lifeguard for approximately four years. Um, full time, it's how, part of how I paid for school. Um, and then my last sport is going to be a tie with artistic swimming and it's open water swimming. What is bottom line entry in open water swimming? I think, so my first open water swim is kind of the perfect example. I was approximately, a little over or approximately two miles in a lake and I did it for my sweet 16. So that was in 2008, I swam approximately approximately two miles across the lake with three friends in the water and a friend slash swim coach in a boat making sure we didn't drown. There's um, natural elements, there's water traffic, so like we were dodging boats out there kind of thing um, because it was just, it was a, not a record, it was kind of a recreational swim but not really. Competition level is usually five, 5,000 meters, so five kilometers. Um, or more. So two miles is less than that, if I'm recalling correctly. And so it was shorter than that. It's a perfect example of a baseline entry though, because anybody could sign up for it. There was no qualifying time. It was anybody can sign up and just give us the guess of how long this is going to take you and we'll pair you with a safety person to get you across the lake. Um, so if anything goes wrong, there's a boat, that kind of thing. Um, you need to be able to swim the distance without touching the bottom of the pool, <laughs> there is no bottom of the pool, um, without touching, like, there, there's no wall, there's no nothing at the bottom, like, you, you kind of, you're not really allowed to stop if you kind of, like, kind of thing, um, so you need to be able to swim, but you need to be able to swim far, and you need to be able to, like, in our case, we were out there dodging boats, <laughs> like, there's a self-awareness and situational awareness to not, if you're not in a competition where all of that, like, competitions are kind of privileged in the sense of all of that will be blocked off. Uh, we did not have that privilege. We were just out there with a bunch of other traffic on Lake Washington. <laughs> and then this is the kind of thing. So there's a situational awareness. Um, even if the competition is blocked off, there might be wildlife. So there could be sharks. There could be sea turtles. There could be jellyfish. Jellyfish is a very common one. Uh, what we had a bunch of was kelp. So there can be vegetation that gets in the way. Um, there can be waves. There can be winds. There can be currents. It can be difficult. Um, and so, yeah, depending on where one is. So I would put it kind of above these other ones. Oh, and it can be high contact. You're not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be high contact, but people could, you could, Everybody's kind of close together if everybody's about the same speed. So you could get kicked or something by the person that, ahead of you or next to you or something. And, and it can be an accident. Uh, um, so kind of there's a unique aspect of it is kind of a spacing. Like keeping one's own bubble so that one doesn't get injured. Yeah. But that is my ranking. So from least difficult to most difficult, talking bottom line entry to different aquatic sports. Yeah, so I guess least difficult to most difficult, diving, uh, springboard platform, pool, then pool swimming, then high diving, then surfing, then water polo, then lifeguarding slash lifesaving, and then a tie between artistic swimming and open water swimming. Boom.